What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jagabatero. Last week, I kind of disappeared again. <laughs> but this time, I had a really good reason. I was away on holiday for a week in London, England. Now, I would love to be able to say, oh, I was over there playing the new Call of Duty maps, or I was over there playing the new game from, I don't know, Ninja Theory or something like that. But sadly, I was just away on a wee holiday with myself and the other half. What an amazing time we had. So for about the next seven minutes, I'm just going to kind of talk about what I got up to and what I'd done when I was over in London. Now, the first thing I noticed when I got into London was the amount of diversity in that city. In London, as I'm speaking right now, English, white English people are actually the minority. London isn't full of English people like me, maybe you're thinking, but it's actually full of different races and cultures and everything. There is actually very, very few English people left in London. There were so many French people, German, Indian, African. It was just mind-blowing because in my wee corner of the world and over in Northern Ireland, it's just us. The Northern Irish people, Irish people, Polish, and the odd time Chinese, uh, Indian, and whatnot. So going over there was a completely new experience for me, anyway. My girlfriend was a wee bit, ah, uh, oh well, it's just a couple of people. What's so amazing about that? But for me, I was just like, wow, what the flip am I going to do with all of this? The most weird thing for me was that nobody could understand me. <laughs> You may think that when I'm speaking now is the way I normally speak. It really isn't. I'm a lot more broad. I'm a lot more country. I wouldn't say redneck for you American people over there, but yeah, I'm just really broad. I'm really country. <laughs> Nobody could understand me. I was standing in the queue for McDonald's and I was like, can I get a Big Mac? And she was like, what? A, a Big Mac? Oh, you want a Big Mac? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it was just really awkward in a lot of situations. As you know, at the start, I often would start off me speaking, saying, what's the crack? Now, when you're in London, that might mean something completely different. <laughs> they might think, is this boy like asking me for drugs or something? I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I remember the first time I actually spoke to the uh, Pat's fan. On Xbox, I said, "What's the crack?" And he was like, "What are you? What are you asking me? Are you? Are, <laughs> can I help you with something?" When we were over there, we just typically done all the touristy things. We went to the Tower of London. We ended up at Buckingham Palace. We ended up at Buckingham Palace actually, just in time for the changing of the guard. Now, that was bunged out. The whole circular bit around the front of the castle, if you've ever seen it during Prince William's wedding or in cars when they're racing around it, is this big cir it was semicircle. And that whole area was bunged out just to see a bunch of guards march out and wander off up the road somewhere. We also went to the Tower of London and it was pretty cool. We got to see the Crown Jewels, we got to, to see around the White Tower, which is this big castle in the middle of it. We got to hear how people were executed. It was all really cool and really interesting. If you're a history fanatic, it was awesome. On the same day, we went to the Tower of London and Buckingham Palace. We also went to Covent Gardens, which is this really big marketplace in the middle of London. And there's so many stalls and wee shops. Me and my girlfriend went into this little Indian restaurant. This little, well, more of a cafe than a restaurant. And the doors were open up into Covent Gardens. And there was a four-string quartet. Uh, three violins and a cello. It wasn't big enough for a double bass. And they were playing all these well-known, like, they were playing Gungam style, they were playing uh, Pachelbel. They were, oh, it was just like a mixture of songs and they were really amazing and we were kind of getting serenaded while we were eating our food. We also went to see a theatre show. We went to see The Lion King. Now that was really cool. Uh, the people all dressed up in their costumes marched up the aisles at the start of the film, you know, when they're coming in to see Simba for the first time. And the costumes were amazing. It was like a cheetah. The woman was dressed up in a cheetah costume, but her whole body was like the back legs, a reverse centaur with the front of the cheetah and the head coming out in front of her. And her ears were attached to the by wires to the head of the leopard. So when she moved her head left and right, the leopard's head moved left and right. 
Now that was really cool. The music was amazing as well. We literally walked the legs off ourselves. <laughs> we just done so much sightseeing and so much walking about. Regent Street, that whole about two mile stretch of ridiculously expensive shops. You get like your Hollister, you've got Super Drive, but then you go about halfway up and you've got uh, Hamley's, the most amazing toy shop in the world ever, apart from the one in New York, but I don't think I'll be seeing it anytime soon. You've got expensive tuck shops, you've got expensive women's shops, men's shops, and then, and a whole different experience in itself is Harrods. Harrods is this amazing department store. And it is just full of the most expensive things in the world ever. There was a watch, a man's watch, for £350,000. Now, I have a watch. It cost me £50. And it works. Why would you ever buy a watch at £350,000? That is just someone with too much money and too much <laughs> time in their hands. Uh, pun intended. Didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> there was caviar. There was a whole fish market in the middle of this shop there was caviar with the tin had diamonds on it this caviar was so expensive the tin actually had diamonds on it me and my girlfriend were thinking through it the entire time are we like posh enough to be walking through this place this is madness a pot of jam was 15 pound a pot of jam was 15 pound why would you spend 15 pound a pot of jam just because it says harrods on it we went into the Tiffany's and Tiffany and Company, Tiffany and Co. And the rings were so expensive they didn't even put a price on them. Like what is that? I had a couple of nice wee jokes with one of the women who worked in there. <laughs> that if I was going to propose it, I would rather buy my house than buy a ring from in there. It's madness. Of course, to all this glitz and glamour side of London, there is a bit of a seedy underside. Which I'm going to do a, like a whole commentary on because it just weirded me out that much. There's so much homelessness in London. There's so much sadness with these people. I'm looking forward to doing a bit of a commentary on this because we kind of had an interesting experience with a homeless guy. Thanks for listening to this little commentary guys. This is just a short one to lead up into the longer one about the homelessness in London. I'm kind of glad to be back getting back into the whole commentary thing. But anyway guys, my name is Jack Potato. I am a Christian. And I will see you on Thursday for my talk on homelessness in London.